welcome to this episode of Reset Revolution. My name is Sara Kimura and I am a high school student currently studying in Paris. So today on this platform, I'll be inviting my close friend, Dahyun Kim, to um, discuss about the effects of academic pressure on the mental health of students in South Korea. Um, we'll be waiting for Diane in a bit. She will join. South Korea is known to have one of the world's highest um, suicide rates. So, um, oops, Dahyun. It is a rather triggering topic. So if you may feel uncomfortable um, listening to um, discussions about mental health. Hello. Hello. Depression, um, suicide rates. Um, please feel free to leave the live now. So, uh, Diane, hello. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. No, thank you so much for being here. Um, Dahyun, could you start off by explaining, um, like introducing yourself? Uh, sure. Um, my name is Diane Kim and I am from South Korea and I spent my middle school years there. So I lived there for three years of my life. And although I did not spend a long time there, I hope that I can um, educate you guys and be as informative as possible. Will be, yes. Um, learning a lot from this, I believe. <laughs> um, so um, to start off, may I ask you to give an outline of the education system in South Korea? Um, sure. So the Korean education system has um, the primary school, the middle school and high school and then college. So primary school is from grade one to six. And then we have middle school, which is from grade seven to grade eight, I believe. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, actually from seven to nine. And then high school is 10 to 12. But in Korea, we call it chung il, chung yi, chung san. So like middle school year one, middle school year two, middle school year three. And then for high school, it's high school year one, high school year two, high school year three. And at the end of um, grade 12, at near the end of grade 12, we have the um, uh, SAT, Korean SAT, called Sunung, which is what kind of determines what uh, college you will be able to get into by your test results. So you spend 12 years of your life studying for this big exam at the end of grade 12. Like one test that decides? Yes. <laughs> One test um, takes a big percentage of what college you get into mm -hmm. for most students or some of the few that are extremely smart. They may get accepted into colleges before they take the test, so they don't really have to worry about that. But for most students, the Sunung is the biggest part of their whole academic years, you could say. That like plane stops that day, like bu buses don't. It's like, a yeah. Wow, like for that one test. It's true. It's true. Um, planes. Yeah, planes are not allowed. They're allowed to um, uh, take off or land that day because they're afraid that, especially during like the English hearing exams, because they're afraid that p kids will not be able to hear it properly. And yeah, it's the city just becomes dead quiet and. Everybody is always very supportive of the students, like idols, like famous people, celebrities. They'll all be like, on the day of the exam, like, good luck to all of the 12th graders. Like, you studied well. Like, you can do this. So it's like, very like, oh, like, you can do this. Like, a very supportive um, message from the society on the day of these exams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. So it's pretty intense. Um, because you've said that you spent your middle school years in South Korea. Could you kind of give us an outline of what school routine was when? Sure. So um, I usually went to school around 8 a.m. I think school started around like 8.30. It really different from school to school. But I think my first class, I, I don't really remember that well, but I think my first class was at 9.00. And classes were usually 45 minutes long, like here. Except unlike here, where we have like one one subject for like two periods, we would have one subject for one period. So 
on most days, it would be like seven subjects to six subjects a day. And after school, school ended at like um, 3.30, so earlier than at our school. But after school, um, I would go home and my schedule was not as rigorous as other students because I know other students, they would go to after school academies, which are basically like, which are basically like um, study places for like math, um, Korean, English, sciences, where you learn more so you can get ahead of your of what you're learning at school and so that you're more prepared for like midterms and finals but and a lot of kids go to like um average two or three a day mm-hmm. maybe like four to five a week so it, they would go like maybe korean and english on one day and science on another day okay so it works tutor for three days a week week and I would go there at five and it would usually end at like 12 a.m so uh, I spent like almost seven hours at the math tutor place oh oh my god that's really intense wow until 12 a.m how about um when just before tests like midterms how many hours do students usually study then? Um, so, well, on average a week, even when there are no tests, they could, they would say like 10 hours a week, like average 10 hours a week. But during the test period, which is like a month before, kids would usually go to sleep at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Like that wasn't something that was uncommon. It was very common. Students would study a lot and a lot and I saw a comment about how old I was back then so I was in my middle school years so 12 13 14 you know like your prime reproductive ages when you need to get a lot of sleep you know you need to like um so you can grow and become a healthy human being but um no a lot of kids there they spend those late hours studying and um that's a question there what is the current situation of mental health like in South Korea? Do you have any data or that you could? Um, the, oh, yeah, I do. So um, out of all the OECD um, countries in the world, South Korea has the longest study time. So um, uh, approximately students will study, like this, all of the students in South Korea, like an average 60 hours and more per week and that's and that is 23.2 percent which is um like twice as twice as high as the oecd um, average which is 13.3 percent and um the students uh their satisfaction with school life out of 48 countries south korea ranks 47th so it's pretty bad and for sleep and this is data from last year, from 2019. Um, primary students get an average like set eight hours and 41 minutes of sleep. Um, middle school students like seven hours, 21. And then high school students like six hours and six hours. But the OECD average is eight hours and 22 minutes. So you can see that mm-hmm. kids do not get a lot of sleep at all. <laughs> It's also one of the reasons why, I guess, height is also very small. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but South Koreans don't, aren't exactly known for being like those tall, like Scandinavian guys. And I think one of the reasons is because of the lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. No, eight hours, like at primary school, I slept like 10 hours. Okay. Exactly. I slept too much. Wow, I see. Um, have you heard? Um, diagnosed or um, 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 well, I remember being very, very stressed. Like, mm-hmm. it was not a very good environment for me because I went to Korea when I started middle school, which is like really prime ages you know 
like this is when like kids are still figuring themselves out you know puberty's hitting them they don't know who they are anymore and middle school is when it gets really really serious like it's so different from primary school the level the gap between is just so high the difficulty level just becomes so high and suddenly everyone expects you to know everything so it's no longer like that um supportive community that you had in primary school and I remember being more stressed than I've ever been in my entire life like I don't think kids should be this stressed ever like I remember like at one point I just wanted to scream I just wanted to climb a mountain and scream because I felt so stuffy like it was it was not a good atmosphere for anyone to work in at all and because Korea itself is a very competitive society it was always competition. You had to be first because in Korea, it's kind of like, it's a society where society only applauds the people that come in first and they kind of neglect everyone else. So everyone was always trying to be first. It was test after test, you know, teachers were constantly telling you, you need to study now to get into a good university. Like I saw a comment earlier that said like, how important is college in Korea to succeed? it is so important because in Korea, companies, they look at your resume and they look, and the first thing they look at is the college name. Mm-hmm. So if your college is a good college, like they, they sort it into different um, piles, like the resumes. So like the good colleges, like the Ivy Leagues, and then like the not the mediocre colleges, they split it like that. And then all of the people that have been to these mediocre colleges, there's a very high chance that they will get disqualified. So that's why students study so much to try and get into one of these Ivy Leagues. In Korea, we call it Sky, which is Seoul University, Korea University, and Yonsei University. And getting into one of these three universities, it's like every kid's dream. It's like every kid's dream, their parents' dream, their grandparents' dream, their uncle, cousin, you name it. It's, It's like... Everybody wants to get into these universities, but there's only so much limited space. And so a lot of pressure is built up from these kids, not only from themselves, but from their parents and their teachers to, because they're all pressuring them. Like you need to get into a good university to be able to succeed in life. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. I, um, it, one question saying, how about your friends? Like your friends, like any of them suffer from depression or? If... Yes, um, I know a few friends who tried to commit suicide um, mm-hmm. from the pressure that they felt. Um, and I know like because these kids, they're getting so much pressure at such a young age and they don't know how to deal with it, there's usually a chance that they take it out on the kids that are surrounding them. So that's why bullying is such a big problem as well. And schools don't do a very good job at dealing with the bullying that's happening. Like for me, I was, I was bullied personally in my years in Korea. And um, one of these girls that bullied me, her reason was because I had lived in like the, a, lot, a lot of countries before, like that was her reason for bullying me. And like, it's not, like, it's not a reason that you should be like, oh, okay, like that, that's a reason. Oh yeah, that's a fine reason for you to bully. Like, no, like that's, that's a very petty reason to bully someone. But these kids needed an outlet because they didn't have one. Like, um, according to, I think it's the OECD, Korean students have less than two hours a day mm-hmm. of free time. And they spend it all on the internet. It's less than two hours a day when, like, mm-hmm. the American average is, like, five or more hours a day like even here in France I have more free time than I did in than I did in Korea like in and that's kind of crazy because I'm in high school now but I know kids in Korea who are still in primary school that have less free time than I do yeah Um, oh, wow. I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? Even in primary school. 
Thank you. One question here is, um, so this topic has been been such an integrity in Korea. Has the state or anyone anything to change the issue? Oh, okay. So, or like any also, um, have they tried to change? Um, so, uh, no, not really. This is Audio's something that's to. deemed normal. This is something that's deemed normal in Korea. Like, the Korean culture in general, it's very, like, you can't blame someone. Like, you're tired, so is everyone else. Like, you shouldn't complain. It's, like, that kind of culture, you know? So even if you are feeling stressed, you can't really talk to anyone about it because everybody just says that it's a complaint. Like, oh, you're just complaining about your life. Your life is hard, so is mine. And you shouldn't do that because everyone deals with different difficulties in life but especially when it comes to studying kids have this weird um uh like kids from a young age like they think that the more you study the better you are so these kids have these weird competitions where they will see like how many hours you studied how many hours you've slept like like they'll ask you oh how many hours did you study yesterday and you'd be like oh like you know six seven and they'd be like well, no way, like, I only studied four, like, oh, I'm going to fail the next test. It's very, like, they look at the hours that you study more than what you do in those hours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see. Like, I do that with my, my friends, I think, like, but then it's obviously not as intense, like, it's not, like, six hours, it's more like, oh, I studied minutes for the test today, like, what am I going to do? But then, well, must be intense. Um, Diane, how is mental health, like, how are mental illnesses perceived in South Korea? Like, is it, like, a taboo to talk about? It is. It's considered a taboo. Like I said earlier, it's very, like, you're, you're having a hard time, so is everyone else. You shouldn't complain kind of society. And even, and even if you do express your feelings, no one will really take them seriously. First of all, they'd be like, most adults would be like, it'll be, it'll get okay, it'll be, it'll get better when you're in college, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this is all hard work for your reward getting into a good college, which leads to a good life, which leads to a good marriage, which leads to um, a happy, long life, you know? They, um, which is a very different mentality from, like, other countries, like here in France, right? People, they work to live, right? They don't live to work. But in Korea, it's much, much more the opposite. These kids, they, they study to live. They don't live to study. They study to live so that they can get a good job, so that they can live to work, so that they can earn more money, so that they can have a good, so that they can meet a good um, wife or husband, and so that they can have, like, children, and they will have a good reputation in the society, live in a good house, um, carry a good, um, have a good car, you know? have a leave a social marking in the society because mm-hmm. and um that's taught very early on you know you need to study to get into a good college you need to study to meet a good mm-hmm. com- meet a good husband or wife and so complaining about what you're going through isn't gonna work no one is gonna really take it seriously and mm-hmm. so these kids, they don't have anywhere to turn to because, and they blame it on themselves. They blame it on themselves. They're like, oh, this is all happening because I'm too stupid. Or, oh, this is happening because of my, like, because of, like, I didn't study enough. And they blame this on themselves and it gets really bad. So this is what leads to, like, bullying or, like, suicide rates. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. No, Diane, there's one question here. Is entering college a kind of relief for students after going through high school? It is. Actually, it is because um, I was looking at something and I, I was looking at some data and it says that the hours you study in. OK, so here are the hours, like the average hours that kids study in 2015. So primary kids would be five hours and 23 minutes. Um, Middle school kids would be seven hours and 16 minutes. High school students would be eight hours and 28 minutes. 
but then for college students it'd be four hours and ten minutes so you can see like daily average pardon me daily average um yeah 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 Yes, mm-hmm. daily average for a primary student, five hours. Like, can you imagine that? But oh. you can see, like, the sharp decrease from high school and college. Like, it's a four-hour decrease from high school to college. So you can see that these kids feel so much relief that they're finally in college. They think everything will be okay now. Like, that's like, whew, you know, that's their relief. Mm-hmm. That's that college true? itself is also really hard to get into because this there's so many people and only some like such limited space right but it's not true actually from your question earlier it's not true because high school i mean college it may not be as rigorous as high school but it's still college you know like you still need to study to some degree to keep your grades in check to make sure that you get the grades that you need so that you can like get on to higher um, grades in, <laughs> I'm not making any sense but but these kids because you feel so much relief they usually spend their first year in college just kind of partying like you know this is like my reward for all those like four years of like not being able to party because in it's usually common that in call in high school and middle school you won't be able to like go out with your friends and make these me- make a lot of memories because your parents will be like, you have plenty of time to do that when you go into college. You this is a time to be studying. This isn't a time to be playing with your friends and making memories. This is a time for you to be studying. When mm. you know, like the memories you make from middle school and high school are probably the memories that you're gonna remember the longest in your life. So that's really sad that most of these kids won't have any good memories to look back on like when they're 30 or 40 and they're looking back at their childhood and they realize that all they've done is pretty much studying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i see are parents like also do they also allow um the children to like maybe just party once they go in college are they more like i don't know like you've you've done now yeah parents college. Mm-hmm. Parents are definitely more free when they when these kids get into college because um, unless unless but they're always the unless parts you know like some kids they have very very possessive I guess like very like helicopter parents and even when they go into college their parents will be like this is a time to make connections you know this is a time to get look for internships you know get good grades so that you can make connections and get a good job already they're thinking about your job that you haven't even thought about yet they're already thinking about it so you could say that for most korean students their lives are pretty much planned ahead of them their parents basically plan their entire lives ahead of them especially if these students are if these students are from like successful families like families whose parents are doctors or you know wealthy businessmen these parents don't want their child to fail because that would mean that they have failed as parents which puts a scratch on their reputation so they will put even more pressure on these kids on their kids to reach the same level of success as they did and so it'll be even more stressful for these kids and what these parents don't realize that the academic system then and now, like for them and for their kids are so different and um, competition has risen, um, getting into a good college is even harder than ever, getting a good job is harder than ever, like everything is harder, but they expect more from these kids. And mm-hmm. so it'll be, and they also expect these kids to be able to like know how to like speak to other languages, um, English is a must, and like instruments, instruments are a big part as well. And be educated in like one area of the arts as well. So it's very, very stressful for anyone, you know, like usually in the Western media, you know, rich kids are received as they can do whatever they want and get away with it, you know, they don't need to study, they have their dad's or mom's money to back them up. 
they can get into whatever job they want. But in Korea, it's looked at such a different way. In fact, if you're the kid of a rich person, there will be more pressure on you. It's more of that mm. than in the Western media. Putting the culture in and all. Uh huh. Um, I actually there was one question about I wanted to ask you about that. Well, um, COVID nineteen has definitely um, made many more people glow. Um, that has really caused more mental illnesses, like building up um, from mental illnesses today. Um, can you explain me how it has influenced um, the mental of South Korean students? Um, well, first of all, having to study from home is very different from what's going on in other parts of the world. Like I know in America or even here, um, students will go on Zoom and they will have a class with their teachers. Mm -hmm. But in Korea, it's very different. It's very case by case. But for some schools, because um, because the schools are so large, there's usually like one thousand kids in one grade, um, and teachers will use and teachers are not very well educated in how to use Zoom because they don't really use technology when it comes to studying. Um, teachers will like put up uh, like um, lectures on Google Classroom or make the kids go on a site like EBS which is like a um, educational broadcasting system and they will make them watch lectures from there and solve like quizzes and that will be their lesson so it's like less interaction between teacher and student and more of a study yourself which is what kids are used to but they do it all the time and at school, you know, it's a time where they can meet friends. Like, it's a time where they can unwind, you know, from all of the stress that they feel from studying. They can talk to their friends, you know, like, mess around a bit, have, a, have fun, laugh. But now that that's gone, it's more studying and more studying and more studying. It's just the hours of studying have now just increased instead of decreased. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, that's, that's awful. Like, I... It is a global um, thing, but then at the same time, like, yeah, that happening in South Korea, we can imagine how suffocating it would be to stay home until to constantly study, I guess. Uh -huh. um, are there any other fa factors, um, other than, um, not other than, maybe factors that, like, are affected by um, academic pressure that, that are... Um, causing um, damage on well-being of students? Well, first of all, students in South Korea don't get enough exercise time. Well, like, as I mentioned before, they do not get enough free time as well with, like, an average of maybe less than two hours a day of free time, and they use most of that on the internet. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to have any time to exercise by themselves and they only have like two hours a week at school to um to uh, ask their PE time and two hours a week that's probably all these kids are going to do and even during those two hours there's a chance that they won't actually take it seriously and will just sit on the sidelines and talk to their friends and um that's very stressful because exercise is a very good way to improve your concentration, you know, um, better your health, feel better, you know, feel better about yourself. And it gives your body a break from constantly sitting down, looking at your books, you know, straining your eyes. And you can, and fresh air is always good for you. But these kids, especially um, female students, they don't really, they don't really exercise at all. And also, these kids, they don't get a chance to eat balanced meals because they're always at an after-school academy. And these usually end at like 10, 11 p.m., maybe 12, 1, p 1 a.m. So they will usually go to like the local con convenience store with like their friends and get something instant like ramyun or something fried, you know, something that's quick and easy but tasty as well. 
And so they don't really get a chance to eat like homemade healthy meals. Mm -hmm. So that also affects their health as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also the and there's also the not enough sleep time. Like four hours is is not enough sleep time for a growing kid. You know, it's not enough time to give your brain rest before you have to get up again and then repeat this rigorous cycle all over again. And there are also like conflicts between parents, friends, and teachers because parents are always constantly pressuring you to do better. And between friends, conflicts can always happen because you're always so stressed. And then with mm. teachers as well, the conflict with teachers are also very common. Like in what sense? Like how does that? Well, in in Korea, um, in in Korea we have this system called Paljong, which is basically like negative marks and if you collect a, a certain number of these negative marks they go into your resume so colleges can see that and they can see that oh this person has gotten this many negative marks that's not good and they do this so that kids will behave themselves better and know that if they do something bad there will be consequences but it's being misused because now teachers they are very biased and if someone with very good grades does something bad, teachers will take their side and they'll pretend that it never happened to keep their school reputation. And to, so because these, two, these students are basically the school's reputation. If a student goes to like one of the Ivy League colleges, that is very good publication for that school. So for kids with good grades, um, teachers will be very biased and they will let them get away with pretty much everything but then for kids with like grades that are not as good teachers will be more strict with them and if they do something bad then they will give them the bad marks like regardless of like what they did so it's a very biased community in itself mm -hmm. like I know a friend um like recently at her at her school um a similar thing happened like the principal like something happened between like these kids who had good grades and bad grades and the principal he only gave the bad the bad marks to the kids with like the bad grades and and then took the side of the kids with the good grades and they didn't get any punishment at all and this isn't good for a very for a number of reasons because first of all how are these kids with good grades ever going to learn that if they do something bad, consequences will follow? Since in Korea, basically, if you have good grades, you're the golden child. You can get everything you want and you can get away with anything you want. You're like, your parents will like, they'll get you whatever you want because if you can keep those grades, then they will make sure that they do whatever they can so you can keep those grades. So um, these kids, they're very spoiled. They think that they can get whatever they want and get away with everything, whatever they do, because they have good grades. Like, not for everyone, for some, you know? And so these, and that's not good, because when you go out into society, you won't be, you will expect to get away with, like, the simplest things when it's not, like, it's not that, it's not true in society, right? So in a way, schools are kind of not, teaching students basic um, manners and skills they need when they go into society because they're so caught up in that moment like in this moment of high school if this kid is doing well they can get away with everything and they don't think about the consequences that could happen in mm -hmm. further years i see no that's it's like such like the culture is so different from what we have in the western world i feel like um obviously um in western countries we're about how sociable you that kind of determines how i don't like people compete their status over how sociable but yeah no it's how well you do it at school in terms of grades like well like if that that's what's building your status it's I, i've never heard of any other country like that it's really oh. Definitely. Um, and for jobs as well. For jobs as well. Like 
they expect you to have good grades, but also mm-hmm. they expect you to be unique. So they expect you to have good grades, outstanding grades. But at the same time, a lot of after school activities, like you can also do this and this and this. But at the same time, they also expect you to fit into this society where everybody is like everyone else. You know, Korea is a place where it's a very fast, fast culture and everyone's always constantly trying to fit in. So everyone's always following like the latest trends. Everyone's trying to be trendy. They're always trying to fit in. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, and if you're unique, there's a chance that you will get outcasted. But Mm -hmm. these companies expect you to be unique, but at the same time, fit in. So it's very contradicting society as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Uh The culture. Mm -hmm. And final question, I wanted to ask you, how do you think we should move forward and what do you envision in the future? I think, first of all, um, the Korean society as a whole should change the way that like depression or these very serious issues are viewed because it's reality and it's happening right now, but everyone's turning a blind eye on it. So I feel like if more awareness was brought towards the subject, then change could be brought. And I, what I envision for the future is that maybe the education system goes over these current outlines that they have because it's, uh, it's so stressful for these students. And maybe they could think of new ways, like interpret new ways or try to change the current outlines that they have so that it will be more fair for everyone and less stressful as well. Like it's it's something that is very rarely going to happen because Koreans are so used to the current system that they have. And I don't think that they will want it to change, but it's something that we can hope for for the sake of the students. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see, yes. Like, it, sh- it definitely shouldn't be normalized. And no, thank you so much, Diane, for talking about the experiences. These, uh, I, I believe everyone here has learned so much from what you have told us today. Thank I hope you so, so too. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone um, watching. And look forward to our next episode. Thank you very much. Bye, Diane. Bye.